Hello dear friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel, Geotechnical Engineering Consultancy Tips. Today I will be telling you all about liquefaction utilization techniques. Actually, I would be discussing with you about a few ground improvement methods suggested to overcome liquefaction. Introduction to liquefaction, which I have already given in one of my previous lectures. Liquefaction has been confirmed as occurring in many earthquakes in Japan. Since 1872, however, it was the year 1964 when two major earthquakes of Alaska, United States of America, with magnitude on a stress scale as 9.2, and Niigata, Japan, with magnitude on a stress scale as 7.5, within a short span of three months, shook the engineering profession and brought liquefaction to the forefront of interest because of the spectacular damage that occurred, resulting in the liquefaction caused destruction, producing lots of settlements up to several feet and severe tilting up to 80 degrees or overturning of the structures as well as liquefaction induced through failures washing away <coughs> large sections of towns of Seward, Whittier and Valde in the United States of America as well as resulted in many bridge failures. <coughs> liquefaction is actually defined as the loss of strength and stiffness in saturated cohesion as soils because of increased pore water pressures and hence reduced effective stresses due to earthquake shaking or any other rapid dynamic loading. Now the first image shows that Alaska earthquake related issues of America 1964 that displacement of houses occurred and roads cracked, highways cracked wide open. Second image of Niigata earthquake Japan 1964 shows how these buildings tilted and overturned these apartment buildings <coughs> because of earthquake induced liquefaction. Another example, the third picture is 1964 Niigata earthquake, where the multi span bridge failure occurred because of the movement of piers due to lateral spreading caused by earthquake induced liquefaction. <laughs> now, the suggested measures to overcome liquefaction one, increasing vertical stress by putting extra surcharge before the start of construction, two, providing stone columns by improving drainage or dewatering. 3. By compaction, that is densification of soil, lower compaction for shallow liquefiable depths, safer embankments, roads, etc. <coughs> Dynamic compaction, vibro compaction, that is vibro rotation, compaction grouting, and compaction by pile drain. Number 4. Removal of liquefiable soils, which is easy to apply for shallow liquefiable depths at the top or near the ground level if found. Number five, constructing anchored piles, that is piles anchored in bedrocks much below the liquefiable depth layer. Number six, constructing liquefaction resistant structures, that is structural fortification, meaning thereby strengthening the structural connections to counter the effects of liquefaction. That is, we try to make the foundations monolithic. Now, increasing vertical stress. You find that this is the soil and by putting extra surcharge before the start of the construction work, what we do is that we create rather expect and do that the settlements which may take place after the structure has constructed, we by putting such surcharges, we actually make the settlements happen before the actual construction so that after the construction is done, this liquefiable susceptible soil does not adversely affect the safety of the structure. <laughs> <coughs> Providing stone columns, improving drainage or dewatering by any suitable means as per site conditions. These are the stone columns being built here. You see the seepage flow with this red arrow. These are the blue arrows showing that is the excess pore water pressure is released and it's very effective in cohesive soils <coughs> or as the site case may be. <coughs> compaction, densification of soil, roller compaction for shallow liquefiable depth, say for embankment zones, etc. Dynamic compaction, vibro compaction, vibro protection, compaction grouting, compaction by pile driving. Now, what actually does roller compaction do? This is applicable for shallow liquefiable depths for embankments and roads. We use rubber tire roller and a smooth wheel vibratory roller. Roll these soils 
in layers so as to effectively neutralize the earthquake induced liquefaction effects later dynamic compression in this very case big weights of say 30 40 tons are dropped from 20 to 40 meter height compacting the ground these craters are formed in the ground due to which due to the action of these big weights being dropped and this effectively reduces post construction liquefaction susceptibility of the soil <coughs> Now, vibro compaction, vibro flotation, this is used for cohesionless deposits. Craters are formed during vibratory motion, like this, in the original loose soil. After that, sand and gravel is then added to the crater form in layers, doing vibratory, doing simultaneous vibration, vibrations. And here you find that this crater is being fully filled with compacted and refilled material which may be sand or gravel <coughs> and hence in turn this site effectively reduces the earthquake induced liquefaction susceptibility of this particular site and has been found to be very effective. Now compaction grouting, a stiff low mobility grout is slowly injected into loose soils under high pressure as has been seen here, grout does not enter the soil pores but forms a bulb. This is the bulb that compacts and densifies the soil by forcing it to occupy less space, and then further, the structure is being built on such a treated soil. <coughs> now, compaction by pile driving, providing pile foundations in itself is a ground improvement technique, and when piles are driven in loose sand deposits. They in turn compress the sand within the area covered by around 5 to 8 times around. Hence, results in increase in the stiffness of the soil stratum due to pile drive. <coughs> now, removal of liquefiable soils, which is a very easy case and is easily applicable for shallow liquefiable depths at the top or if found near the ground level, as has been shown in this very particular case. Removal of soil layers that can liquefy. That is, the soil layer with potential to liquefy is being shown here. This is the original ground level. And we decided in consultation with the client and the consultant that the lowering of this ground level, right, the lowering of this ground level, effectively removing this liquefiable soil will in turn make this soil liquefaction susceptibility susceptible proof that is it will not make any major disturbances in the safety of the structure when a structure is built on this very soil <coughs> after the due treatment has been done which actually was the removal of the liquefied soil in this very particular case now constructing anchored piles that is piles anchored in bedrocks much below the liquefied depth layer these are the piles being built here it effectively crosses this liquefiable layer and is being embedded into the hard bedrock, thus making it sir, making it least susceptible to earthquake induced liquefaction in future. Now the liquefaction resistant structure that is actually the fortification of the structural elements of the building. A structure possessing ductility can accommodate large deformations, that is, and sustainable supports can counter differential settlements, and hence foundations should be designed in such a way that they can overcome these, that they can overcome these soft spots, which in turn can decrease or be able to counter the amount of damage a structure may suffer due to liquefaction. How to achieve to achieve these features in a building, following aspects need be considered. Shallow foundation aspects and deep foundation aspects. Now, what do we do in shallow foundation aspects? Here you find this image a building is being constructed on a matte foundation which can enable transfer loads in shallow liquefied zones. What actually <coughs> is the case here? All foundation elements in a shallow foundation should be tied together to make the foundation move or settle uniformly, thus decreasing the amount of shear forces induced in the structural elements 
resting upon the foundation. Now, what actually happens in this? This is the example case. The well reinforced perimeter integral wall footings tied together enable them to drill. Bridge over areas of local settlement and provide better resistance against soil movements. But what the buried utilities? They should also be built in such a way that they have ductile connections in order to accommodate the large movements and settlements that occur due to liquefaction. Because it has been observed in the past that these sewer lines, etc., come out when liquefaction occurs. So that the probable foundations of them resting in liquefiable soils. If such is the case, we are able to counter this if provided with ductile connections. Now, deep foundation aspects. I will be discussing two aspects, two cases in this. One is building being constructed on pile foundation, but what actually is the situation is the locations of high bending moments, which is actually the interface of the this fill and the liquefied liquefiable soil and the interface of this liquefiable soil with a stiffened layer beneath. <coughs> now what happens? Piles driven through a potentially liquefiable soil layer to a stronger layer does not layer sorry uh, to a stronger layer not only have to carry vertical loads from the superstructure but also there is the horizontal loads. And bending moments induce lateral movements due to earthquake induced liquefaction. If that layer liquefies, sufficient resistance should therefore be achieved by piles of by providing piles of larger dimensions and or more reinforcement in order to be able to build sustainable, safe, and suitable foundations in such liquefiers. Now, what is the second case? A pile cap due to movement. Same is the case, pale, liquefied layer and stiff layer, pile cap failure. Piles should be connected to the cap in a ductile manner, allowing rotation to occur without the failure of the condition. If the pile connections fail, the cap cannot resist overturning moments, as has been shown in this figure, from the superstructure by developed vertical loads in piles. So we have to take care of accordingly also as <coughs> these are the reference and acknowledgements. A few images have been taken from this website. A few images have been taken from the internet media, and few of the lines have been taken from a presentation of. Ms. Ajanta Sachan, that then assistant professor of engineering department at Gandhi. When I read this presentation of her in the year 2016. Now, Namaskar and thank you. Hope, dear friends, you would have enjoyed this lecture of mine. Keep on subscribing to my YouTube channel, Your Technical Engineering Consultancy. Thank you. Thank you very much.